over again. I'm saying that the government has every obligation to pass laws prohibiting certain behaviors, don't they? Right. Well, my point to my buddy was simply that... I don't care about your drunken buddy in a bar. I said categorically a government has an obligation to pass certain laws regarding certain acts and behaviors, don't they? Yes, but like... like right, hold on. So my... let's say we would all agree in a sane society that you should prohibit sex with animals. Wouldn't you say that's a good idea for a government to ban that unless you live in Washington State? Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, so so you agree with me that govern, a government has to pass some laws because otherwise people would live lower than animals. So a law that says you should not have sex with a farm animal is a good law, right? And even your libertarian buddies would agree with that, correct? Well, no, no. My, uh, when it comes to this, but I, my point to my libertarian buddies... Wait, wait, please. Can we take it a step at a time? Can we please take it a step at a time? Even your libertarian buddies, while they're drinking their buds would understand that a government has to enact certain laws to control the population. Isn't that correct? That's correct. All right, so we're talking about another law, prohibit first cousin marriage. It's outlawed in 36 states. I think it should be outlawed in 50 states. I agree. All right, I don't, I don't want to belabor this. Uh, you know, I just had a cracker with tuna fish on it. I'd rather keep it down than see it come back up through my nostrils. I mean, I made my point. Of course you need government. We're talking about limited government. We're not talking about an oppressive government that rules over every aspect of your life. So, again, going to a primary point, and I think we've covered it. I don't want to go over it again and again and again. You know, it's a short answer question. It's not an essay. There are various state laws regarding marriages between first cousins, and 25 states prohibit marriages between first cousins. North Carolina is the only state that allows first cousin marriage. Now... Who was the senator from North Carolina? That may explain it. Uh, who's the con who are the congressmen from North Carolina? That would explain an awful lot of the behavior coming out of that. I'm joking. No, the fact is, why would a state pro pro permit first cousin marriage, a state like North Carolina? You know, the jokes, the hillbillies and all of that, you get it? The inbreeding. I mean, they, you made jokes about it when it was in America, right? WJR, Gus, go ahead, please. You're on the Savage Nation from Detroit on WJR Radio. What's your point? Hi, Dr. Savage. Um, I was uh, born in Iraq and Baghdad, and I'm here in Michigan. I'm, I'm considering myself as a Chaldean American. And I just want to say everything you say, and I've been listening to you for years, everything you say, it's true, and you always predict things for the future. And I'm trying to educate people and trying to refer them to you, especially with the sentence that you usually use, and I think you have a book about it, The Enemy Within. You are 100% true on everything you say. The marriage from cousins that is um, happening in Iraq since I was born there in 1969. And all the things that you say, it is true. And I see that you are the only conservative or the person that I like to listen to that mentioned Quran a lot, which is the reason why this world is became to the level that we were, are right now. Um, Muslim people, they're just like you and me, they're human, but what they are learning, if, if anybody with a brain and can Google, like Ayat al Tawbah and other uh, verses from Quran and read it, you don't need any explanation. It says, cut the arm, and you have to cut your left arm and right leg if you steal. Um, stoning, everything. And the people who are... No, they, swear, they still do it in Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia cuts the hands off people who are thieves, right? That is 100%. Saudi Arabia, high-class Saudis cut off the hands of a thief amongst fellow Muslims. What kind of religion teaches that? I know that that, that is in, in Islam. I mean, it spells it. Well, but wait a minute. Here's the thing. Here's the thing we got to be very careful with here. It's found in the Old Testament. It comes from the Jewish Bible. You know that or don't you, Gus? I 100% I understand that. Okay. And I, I mean, if you read Leviticus, you'll see the same things in the Jewish Bible which predated the Quran. So they copied it. The difference is, is that the Jewish people have moved beyond all of the edicts and laws of the Old Testament. And so have most Muslims in the world. They do not practice this fundamentalist, minimalist view uh, of the Quran. They're not living in the 7th century. But unfortunately, in America, we are afraid to even look into this issue. Correct, but Dr. Savage, if you talk to any Muslim, and for you, they are not going to open their heart for you, but if you talk to them, they will tell you, we would like to have al-Sharia law. 
even if you surround them, corner them to a, a degree, say, like, do you really want it? They said, yeah, that's what our book says. I mean, we, if, if we can, and, we will and have what it. Would Sharia, what does Sharia law bring to a community? Tell me what it brings to, a, to, a, a, to an open Western society, but hatred and murder. Absolutely, you're right. Hate and murder and, and fear. And they are trying to do it in Canada and Denmark and other places of the world. But right, and, with, and with, Hillary Clint, with Hillary Clinton in the White House, you will have a Sharia-compliant government. You know that as well as I do. The only hope we have is Donald Trump. I don't care what they say about him. He is the only one who's standing up to this, this uh, war against the West. Now, you know, you said at the beginning you're a Chaldean Christian. Can you explain to my vast listenership what, what the Chalde who the Chaldeans are? I happen to know because I know what persecution you have gone through. Tell my audience in a minute or less what that refers to. Okay, Chaldeans are the original people in Iraq. If you Google it, we, we were written in the Bible. And we are Catholic, Roman Catholic, live in Iraq. And there are a few of us in Syria and few in Iran. We are Christian people. And believe it or not, Saddam Hussein was protecting us at that time. All oh, right. I know it. I know it's true. I know the greatest mistake that Bush ever made in his life was uh, was uh, killing uh, killing Saddam. Cook for him. They were Chaldean and Christian, surrounded by very close Christian people, because he knows that they don't stab him in the back. All right. Yeah, well, the same thing is true of Assad, is it not? The monster Assad? Does he not protect the minority groups in, in Syria right now? I, I will tell you my honest truth. I don't even know what's your view about Assad. Assad, based on what I know from relatives and people from Syria, he adore the Christian people there and the minorities. He goes eat in their houses, go shop in their oh, stores. Well, now you know why Obama wants him dead. What more do you need to know than what you just said? Putin wants Assad to stay, and Obama wants Assad dead. Hillary wants Assad dead. What does that tell you? I don't know. We, we it tells you that they're going to make the biggest mistake of our lifetime, bigger than killing Saddam, bigger than killing Gaddafi. If Syria falls to the animals who want to take over that country, and it won't, by the way, because Putin will, will use nuclear weapons to prevent that from happening. As sure as I'm sitting here, he will use nuclear weapons on ISIS, and he won't have to get permission from uh, from a 10 Downing Street for that. I'm going to send you government zero for the holidays. You're a Christian. That's a stocking stuffer. Back in a minute on the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O. issue is immigration. I'm also talking about uh, inbreeding. And we're talking about uh, a lot of different things in the Savage Nation. I'm not going to summarize them. I can't do it in, in one second or less. Here's a little story, though, to close the hour out with from the Washington Examiner, Paul Bedard. According to the Pew Research Group, Pew Research Center, Muslims are the fastest growing religious group in the world. OK, and 70 percent of them are Democrat. End the story. That's the answer. That's why Obama and Hillary want them here. That's why all of the social, the socially leftist media want them here. They think that they're going to be their friends. Now, it says that most... And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Well, my friends, we now see what the aims are of the multiculturalists. It's a form of cultural genocide. Welcome to The Savage Nation. You were told and you were sold a bill of goods that multiculturalism was about non-racism, but the exact opposite happens to be true. And that's why the liberals are importing people as fast as they can who will never assimilate into this country or, in fact, into Europe, which is why Time magazine awarded that uh, anti-German German Chancellor Merkel, the Eastern European Communist uh, Time Woman of the Year. But I don't want to go into that right now. Instead, I want to take your calls at 855 Four hundred seven two eight two, and take calls on the topics I've talked about for the last couple of hours, which is inbreeding, and whether we should discriminate, or which means make decisions based on rational decisions. Uh, in many ways, we're not doing that. Discriminate means to judge, doesn't it? What's wrong with judging? Don't you judge every day whether to 
do one thing or another. Don't you judge what to eat, what not to eat, what to drink, what not to drink, whether to walk, whether to run, whether to ride. Don't you make judgments all day long? So why can't you make judgments about who to bring into your country? Don't you make judgments about who you'd bring to your dinner table? So you want to make judgments about who you bring into your nation, don't you? Of course you do. The government is making a judgment. Your government under Hussein Obama has said we don't want Christians. That's what he's done. He's made a judgment. He's not a non-racist. He's made a, race, a racial decision that he wants predominantly Syrian Muslims. And he wants predominantly Muslim immigrants. He's made a judgment. Why he would make that judgment is pretty clear. It's because he wants to erase the European-American presence in America as rapidly as he can through multiculturalism. That's my analysis. And I'm a trained analyst. Here's a story just came out on World Net Daily. British government posts petition calling for Trump ban. Candidate would join Michael Savage as persona non grata. It's an interesting story. It brings up things from the past that I'd rather not dwell on right now. But I will remind you that in 2009, I was banned from entering the UK by Prime Minister Gordon Brown's illegitimate Labour government. And they lumped me together with Muslim jihadists and leaders of racist groups, which was as far from the truth as you could ever imagine. And when I petitioned that government with lawyers, to dem I demanded they tell me what I said they wouldn't tell me. So now the campaign for a Trumpless Britannia is led by American-born Irish citizen Suzanne Kelly, who said Trump's proposal to ban Muslims from entering the United States until security issues can be sorted out will add to the petition. She said, after that particularly hateful speech, I think it's going to have an awful lot of backing. Kelly said, these are very inflammatory times that we're living in. The last thing we need is somebody pouring fuel on a fire. What we need is more tolerance and more cultural understanding. That's very interesting. She cited Trump's concern about the large number of rapists and drug dealers among illegal aliens and his call for increased surveillance of mosques, potentially requiring Muslim Americans to register with official government databases. Well, anyway, this, this non-entity woman started the petition and it's got hundreds of thousands of fellow traveling lab laborites signing it. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, I think it was just dropped by the British government. Lucky him. Mine has uh, never been dropped. Uh, I thought Cameron's new government would drop the ban, but he never did. Cameron never dropped the ban on Michael Savage. Cameron, who ran as a conservative, turned out to be a laborite in uh, sheep's clothing. Cameron is identical to the laborites. This is the Savage Nation. Topics are open for debate and discussion. Phone number is 855-400-7282. Let's go to line two. Joel on WABC in New York. Go ahead, please. Uh, yes, uh, I'm a longtime listener. I find your views to be uh, extremely interesting and informative. Uh, I don't know if you've ever looked upon the uh, inbreeding, so to speak, from a completely different uh, viewpoint. Uh, I'm a rabbi, and in my temple, we had a Montessori school that was run by Muslim Pakistanis. They were very highly educated, very quality people. And they explained to me, and this is years ago, why they married only family members. Because we look upon inbreeding as only to bring out negative aspects. But they felt it was just the opposite that with careful inbreeding, knowing the intelligence of your relative, knowing the qualities and background of your relative, by having intermarriage or so-called interbreeding, it brings out the better qualities as well. And well, well let's, let's, let's pause right there because that's factually not true. And the reason, Rabbi, you're supporting it, as I well know, is because it's very common in the Orthodox Jewish communities. It's a little hidden secret, isn't that true? Yes, especially the, the Hasidim in Williamsburg uh, yeah. and the other enclaves right. of the uh, Hasidim. Right. Well, the intelligence, sanity, and health of inbred people are well known to be below that of the non-inbred population. Uh, inbreeding, it doesn't matter whether it's amongst Christians, Jews, or Muslims, have an impact on intelligence, sanity, health, and society. But you're arguing that it's a good thing, but you're wrong. Because let's go back to inbreeding in ancient Egypt. For the very reasons that you just mentioned, Pharaonic dynasties practiced inbreeding, but these Pharaonic dynasties collapsed after a couple of hundred years as a result of the inbreeding. 
Why? Because the offspring were mentally and physically unfit to rule. And another historical example are the royal houses of Europe, where royal families often married among 